All right, now this is the third question in heat conduction. Rod A of length 60 cm is maintained at 40 degrees Celsius at one end and 60 degrees Celsius at the other end. Rod B of length 40 cm is joined in series with the hot end of A. The other end of rod B is at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so sketch the graph of temperature against distance for the rods. Okay, so I want the graph of temperature against distance. Yeah. Now we have to draw out. Yeah. First of all, we draw out the diagram. Yeah. The combination of two rods. Yeah. Rod A and rod B. So well. Uh, I have the rod A with this length and it has these two temperature. Uh, so I draw out like that. So rod A is 60 cm. Okay, rod A is 60 cm and one end is 40 degrees Celsius. The other end is 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is how it looks like. Yeah? 40 and 60. 60 cm. Rod B is shorter. Yeah. Yeah, it is only 40 cm. Eh? Rod A is longer, 60 cm. Rod B is 40 cm. Eh? Rod B is shorter. So I draw rod B shorter, 40 cm. Okay, shorter. Eh? Rod A longer. Okay, rod B is joining with uh, rod A. Okay, it's joining at the hot end of A. Yeah, that means uh, the hot end of A is the 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, the 40 degrees Celsius is the cold end. Uh, the, the, this is the cold end. This is the hot end. So rod B is joining with the hot end of, uh, which is also the, the hot end of A means the, uh, the hot end of A means the 60 degrees Celsius. Lah. Yeah? Rod B is joining at the 60 degrees Celsius of A. So that means B is joining at this 60 degrees Celsius uh, end of A. Uh, okay, the other end of B is at 100 degrees Celsius. So, uh, the other end of B yeah, is 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, so, this is how it looks like. Okay, B is joining at the hot end, 60 degrees Celsius of rod A. Okay, and the other end of B is 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, so, this is how it looks like. Rod A is longer, 60 cm. Rod B is 40 cm only. Okay, so now we have to analyze. Yeah, first of all, uh, before we go to the graph, uh, we need to analyze the direction of heat flow. Yes, you have to first look at what is the direction of heat flow. So we know that the heat always flow from high temperature to low temperature. The heat always flow from high temperature to low temperature. Heat always flow from hot to cold. Yeah, heat always flow from hot to cold. So which one is the hot end? Yeah, of course the hottest one is the hundred degrees Celsius. Yeah, the end of B. Uh, so the hundred degrees Celsius is the hottest end, and forty degrees Celsius is the cold cold end. Yeah, the the lowest temperature. So heat must flow from hundred to forty. Okay, heat must flow from 100 to 40. Uh, so that means the heat is flowing to the left. To the left. Uh, okay, the heat is flowing from 100 to 60, and then 60 flow to 40. Okay, heat flow from 100 to 60, and then heat also flow from 60 to 40. So heat is moving to the left. So uh, our initial temperature. Our initial temperature is the 100, not the 40. Okay? Uh, the, the hot temperature always the initial temperature. The cold temperature is always the final temperature. Okay? Because heat flow from hot to cold. Uh, so, so our 100 degrees Celsius is the first one. So we should label. Uh, we should label. Uh, uh, this is how we label. Okay? Uh, 100 degrees Celsius is T1. And then 60 degrees Celsius is T2, and our 40 degrees Celsius is T3. Uh, our hot temperature is the, the number one. Our cold temperature is the last one, yeah, number three. So when we draw the graph, when we draw the graph, 
we always begin with the T1. We always begin with the hottest temperature because heat flow from hot to cold. Uh, so we begin with the hot temperature, which is T1. So let us uh, label. So 100 degrees Celsius uh, means I over here. Uh, this is uh, 100. And then go to uh, 60. Go to 60. Uh, 60. Uh, so uh, it's around 40. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe. Um, yeah. This is 50. So around 40 over here. 60. Yeah. Uh, this is the 40 degrees Celsius. And this is the 60. Uh, 60 in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Around here. Yeah. So this is the 100 and then go to 60 and then go to 40. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now. Uh, oh, by the way, I think. Okay. Uh, oh, wrong. Yeah. Please. Uh, you see, you need to see the difference in temperature. Yeah. If you want to know where's the, how to draw, we need to see the difference in temperature. Between 160, what is the change of temperature? 100 minus 60 is 40. 60 to 40 is only, the difference is only 20. Uh, so that means between 160, 40, uh, between 60 and 40 is only 20. So that means the difference between 160 is bigger compared to between 60 and 40. So when we draw, when we draw, uh, between 160 need to be a bit um, further away compared to between 60 and 40. Uh, this is how we draw. So between 160 need to be further a bit. But between uh, 60 and 40, the difference is only 20. Yeah. So the difference is uh, less. So that means. Uh, 40 uh, like that okay yeah because you see uh, between 160 the difference is uh, 40 uh? bigger difference compared to between uh, 60 and 40 is only 20 uh, between to 60 and 40 is only 20 uh, so that means uh, 160 need to be further apart compared to 60 and 40 uh, a bit nearer. Okay, uh, this is how we draw. Next, we draw the um, uh, the distance. Okay, so I, as I said, we begin with the hottest temperature because heat flow from hot to cold. So, uh, so here, okay, start with, uh, you know, um, this, this, this one, at this position, we x equal to 0 over here. Uh, x equal to zero here so we start with the hot temperature moving to the cold temperature okay so from from here we start with rod b okay we start with rod b because heat flow from b to a you see uh, so um so let us draw uh from uh, zero to 40 okay zero to 40 uh this is 40 cm compared to 60 cm well, 40 cm is shorter so that means 40 uh, we have 40 here, 40 cm here. Uh, okay, 40 cm is uh, okay. I should draw, I'm um, draw wrongly. Uh, from 0 to 40, need to be further apart. Okay, 0 to 40. Uh, no, no, 40 is shorter, so that means I draw shorter 40 cm, and then uh, after 40, uh, you know, this place, uh, this is, uh, so over here, uh, this is x equal to 40 already. And over here, this is uh, 40 plus 60, you get 100. Uh, yeah. So this, this place is 100. Uh, so this here, here is 100. So, um, yeah. So 0 to 40, okay, shorter. 40 to 100 is further apart uh, because the, the, it is a bigger difference. Yeah. So here is 
hundred. Ah, do you see that? Zero to forty, the difference is only forty cm, but forty to hundred is the difference is sixty cm. So it's further apart. Ah, okay. Ah, that's how we draw it. So now, ah, so we begin with a hundred degrees Celsius. Okay, let us draw the graph now. Ah, let us draw the graph now. So we begin with a hundred. Okay, hundred. Ah. 100 drop to 60. 100 drop to 60 over here. Okay. Over here, you see. At 40 cm, it is at 60. And then, 60 drop to 40. Yeah. At 100 cm. So that means, over here. Yeah. So this is 40 already. Yeah. Over here. So, the graph dropped to 40 uh, after 100 cm. Yeah, this 100 cm I count from x equal to 0 here. Uh, 40 plus 60 is 100. Uh, so the temperature dropped to 40. So uh, this is the graph. I just join them. I just join them. And then this one. Do uh, you see that? Uh, so it appears that. The first part, the first part, which is the rod B, has bigger gradient. The rod A has smaller gradient. Uh, okay? Uh, and then, uh, the gradient must be negative. Negative gradient. Uh, okay? Must always begin with the high temperature, go to the low temperature. Okay? So, this is how it looks like. So, the part, the part, uh, this is the part, this is rod B. This is rod A. Okay, now look at next question. Uh, calculate the calculate the temperature gradient for each rod. So find the temperature gradient. So find the gradient of this temperature distance graph. So the gradient of rod B is okay. Dt dx of B is. So how to find? Uh, find the gradient of the graph. So just take um. Uh, yeah, the gradient of the graph, which is also the final temperature minus the initial temperature uh, divided by the distance between them. Okay, what's the final temperature? The final temperature is uh, 60. 60, okay, minus the initial temperature, which is uh, 100. Okay, which is 100. Divide by the distance between them. Okay, uh, the distance between them. 40 minus 0, yeah? Uh, or 40, C, uh, 40 minus 0, which is 40 cm. Okay, this is degree Celsius. The top one is the degree Celsius. Okay, final minus initial over the distance between them. So, uh, uh, this one changed to meter. Okay, this one changed, sorry. Uh, this part, this changed to meter, 0 0.4 meter. Okay, so what answer do you get? You get negative 100 degrees Celsius per meter. Ah, so, you see, uh, negative gradient. Yeah? Ah, so, yeah, of course. Because, you see, the gradient is negative. Okay? Because the gradient is negative. Uh, the negative gradient. Uh, you get negative gradient. The gradient is negative, isn't it? Ah. So that's why you get a negative dx, dt dx. The temperature gradient is negative. Okay. Then the next one is uh, d, the temperature gradient for rod A. Also, we use, uh, you know, it's the same uh, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. It, yeah. Actually, this thing is the same as you can, um, you can either use the final temperature minus initial temperature over x, or it is the same as a y2 minus y1, uh, x2 minus x1 is the same concept. Yeah? Uh, let's say uh, y2, y2 is 40, okay? Uh, y2 is uh, 40 minus uh, 60, okay? The, uh, this is the same, this is the same as final temperature minus the initial temperature. And then uh, the distance, uh, 
x2 minus x1 which is 100 minus 40. Okay, 100 minus 40. Uh, this is in cm and this is in degree Celsius. So, um, this one you will get what, what uh, the below you will get what? Okay, below you will get uh, this one is uh, you get 60 cm, 60 cm or uh, z change to meter, you get 0 0.6 meter. Okay, 60 cm which is 0 0.6 meter. So, divide and you will get answer. Um, you will get answer uh, negative uh, 33.33 degree Celsius per meter. Yeah. So again, the gradient is negative. Remember, the temperature gradient always negative. Huh? You see the graph. The graph always has the graph always has a negative gradient. The temperature gradient always negative because the temperature is decreasing. Uh, okay? Uh, so you see, rod B has a bigger gradient, rod A has a smaller gradient. Uh, rod A has a smaller gradient, rod B has a bigger gradient. Okay, so next, uh, that, is the, uh, that is the answer, the temperature gradient for each rod. Now, um, is it correct, the answer, temperature gradient for A? Uh, A is negative 33.3. Yeah, negative 3.3. Yes, correct. Yeah, B is negative 100. Yeah, B is negative 100. That's correct. Now, if the cross-sectional area for both rods are the same, which rod has a higher thermal conductivity? Okay, we learned before, the one with a bigger gradient has a smaller thermal conductivity. The one with the smaller temperature gradient, smaller temperature gradient will have bigger Bigger thermal conductivity. Yeah, we learned that before, right? Um, now, uh, well, let us start with the, the earliest concept. Uh, given the area is the same, that means the area is the same for both. Now, which one has a higher thermal conductivity? Okay, explain your answer. Explain your answer. So, you need to show explanation. So, there is one assumption for these questions. It, this rod, a, rod A and rod B, they must both insulated. Did he say insulated? No. Okay. Uh, so assume to be insulated. Assume to be well insulated. So only if well insulated, this rod can achieve steady state. Steady state means the rate of heat flow is constant. Rate of heat flow in B is the same as rate of heat flow in A. Uh, the rate of heat flow is constant because no heat loss. Huh? Along the rod, there's no heat loss. Uh, the, the heat that passes through B will also pass A. No heat loss. Uh, when well insulated, uh, or sometimes they say well lag. Uh, well lag means uh, insulated. Lah. Okay? Uh, so, achieve steady state. Uh, when well insulated, no heat loss. No heat loss. So when no heat loss, all the rod, uh, all the heat that passes through B will also pass through A because no heat loss at the side. So the rate of heat flow at B will be equal to rate of heat flow in A. Uh, so we use this concept and then we apply the formula negative Ka dt dx uh, for both. Uh, okay? And he says that the area is the same for both rods. So that means we can um, uh, cancel out the area. Uh, cancel out the area. So uh, now, now we want to compare. We want to compare. So the temperature gradient for rod B, temperature gradient for rod B is bigger. Uh, temperature gradient for rod B is bigger. Temperature gradient for rod A is smaller. Uh, smaller. So uh, that means. Uh, when the temperature gradient bigger, the thermal conductivity need to be smaller. Uh, when the temperature gradient is smaller, the thermal conductivity need to be bigger. So we can summarize like that. We can say like that. Because dt dx, the temperature gradient of B, 
is bigger than temperature gradient for uh, A, so the thermal conductivity for for the for the B will be smaller than the thermal conductivity for A. Uh, the this uh, you know here there is a negative sign. This negative sign also can be cancelled out. Eh? Uh, this negative and negative can be cancelled out. Okay, so when the temperature gradient of B is bigger than temperature gradient of A, so the thermal conductivity of B will be smaller than thermal conductivity of A. So what I can say is the, the rod, rod B is a bad conductor. Uh, rod B is a bad conductor. Rod A, B is a bad conductor. Uh, and, but A is a good uh, sorry, uh, it's a good conductor of heat. Uh, it's a good conductor of heat. Okay? Uh, so, B is a bad conductor. It's the, so, the answer is, uh, which one, which rod has a higher thermal conductivity? Yeah, rod A. Rod A has a higher, has a higher thermal conductivity because the Temperature gradient is smaller. Okay? So, yeah. Rod A. Rod A is a good conductor. Rod B is a bad conductor. Yeah? I can say... Uh, Alright. So, B, uh, A is a good conductor. Good conductor. And B is a bad conductor. Uh, okay? Good conductor, that means the Ka is bigger. Uh, bad conductor means the K is smaller. So, you see, uh, K is a good conductor. A is a good conductor. So, for good conductor, the temperature change is very small. You see, 60 change to only 40 because it's a good conductor. For bad conductor, the temperature change is very great. Yeah, the temperature change is very great when it is a bad conductor. So, A is a good conductor. Okay? So, um, so I hope you enjoyed the videos. Okay? Stay tuned for the fourth videos. Yeah? The fourth questions. Okay? Thank you.